Hello, you are on the Dirty Files channel. Our current situation is a tragedy. Seven-year-old Sharice was spending time at the arcade while her father was gambling. Although the authorities handed him over to his family twice, they did not release him. Until that terrible event happens. Our children are defenseless. Please keep them in your sights. Here we go. Jeremy Strohmeyer's last statement to the court after committing Sherris's murder was as follows. Wednesday, October 14th, 1998. You cannot imagine a bleaker life than the one I have lived since the tragic morning of May 25th, 1997. It is my decision that you should know the extent of my helplessness, sadness, and guilt. I hope that in these brief words you can appreciate at least some of the shame and regret I carry for what I did. I am haunted every day by the fact that I am responsible for Sherry's Iverson's death. No one other than Sherry's family, or perhaps my grieving family, could begin to understand the depth of my despair and sadness. No one should have to experience the pain that Yolanda Manuel and Leroy Iverson experienced in losing their daughter. As much as I want it, words can't bring Sharice back. But these are still some words that need to be said. I'm hopeless. I apologize for my part in the tragedy that occurred in the early hours of that morning. The tragedy that resulted in the untimely death of little Sharice. I don't know if any apology from me would be of any value to Sharice's family. But if they accept it, I must apologize. To everyone who knows and loves Yolanda Manuel, Leroy Iverson, and Sharice Iverson, let me know. I am truly sorry. Jeremy Strohmeyer is a Long Beach, California man who molested and killed seven-year-old South Los Angeles Elementary School student Sharice Iverson on May 25, 1997, at the Primadonna Resort and Casino in Prim, Nevada. The case gained national attention by focusing on the safety of children in casinos and the revelation that Strohmeyer's friend, David Cash Jr., saw the crime being committed but did not stop it. The moments when the crime was committed. In the early morning hours of May 25, 1997, Jeremy Strohmeyer, 18, and David Cash, Jr., the two men, 17 years old, were at the Prima Donna Resort and Casino in Prim, Nevada, near the California border. The two young men had come to the casino from their home in Long Beach with Cash's father. Around 4 a.m., Strohmeyer began repeatedly making seemingly playful contact with seven-year-old Sherry's Iverson, who was wandering around the casino alone. The young girl's father had been gambling and drinking, and although security guards asked him several times that evening to keep a closer eye on his daughter, he apparently ignored their warnings and continued to let Sharice wander around unsupervised. Eventually, Strohmeyer followed Sharice into the women's restroom. The two began throwing wads of wet paper at each other in the toilet. Sharice then reportedly threw a yellow plastic wet floor sign at Strohmeyer. Around this time, Strohmeyer's friend David Cash entered the restroom and witnessed Strohmeyer force Iverson into a stall. When Cash looked from the adjacent stall, he saw Strohmeyer holding his left hand over Iverson's mouth and stroking him with his right hand. Cash then left the restroom, and Strohmeyer, who followed him 20 minutes later, immediately confessed to him that he had molested and killed the girl. Three days later, Strohmeyer was taken into custody at his home after two Long Beach classmates identified him, after surveillance tape footage captured by casino cameras was released by Nevada police and played on television news, Strohmeyer was charged with first-degree murder, first-degree kidnapping and sexual assault of a minor. When questioned by police, Strohmeyer said he molested Iverson and strangled her to muffle her screams. Before leaving, Strohmeyer realized Iverson was still alive and turned his head to snap his neck. And after hearing a loud popping noise, he rested his body in a sitting position on the toilet with his feet inside the bowl. Strohmeyer's lawyers later tried to have the confession suppressed because he was not given legal advice. But police claim Strohmeyer waived his right to have an attorney present during the interrogation. Lawyers negotiate pleas. Strohmeyer's defense attorney was Leslie Abramson who has represented several high-profile clients, including the Menendez brothers. Strohmeyer claimed that he was addicted to alcohol and drugs at the time and did not remember committing the crime. It has even been suggested that perhaps the witness, David Cash, was the person who killed Sherice, as Strohmeyer claimed that he did not remember his actions, and that the witness was the one who told him what he saw him do in the bathroom that night. Abramson also noted that Strohmeyer's biological father was in prison, 
and his biological mother was in a mental hospital. Strohmeyer's trial was scheduled to begin in September 1998. According to prosecutors, Strohmeyer hoarded pornography, including pornographic images of children, and admitted to fantasizing about sex with young girls. I constantly dream of having sex with five- and six-year-old girls, Strohmeyer allegedly wrote in an internet chat room before the murder, but Abramson claimed prosecutors could not prove the message came from him. Prosecutors also alleged that Strohmeyer asked his ex-girlfriend to dress as a schoolgirl for him. Strohmeyer initially faced a possible death penalty for the murder had the case gone to trial, but hours before his trial was set to begin, Abramson negotiated a plea bargain on his behalf. On September 8, 1998, Strohmeyer pleaded guilty to four charges, first-degree murder, first-degree kidnapping, sexual assault of a minor resulting in serious bodily harm, and sexual assault of a minor. On October 14, 1998, he was sentenced to four life sentences, one for each crime to which he pleaded guilty, to be served consecutively without the possibility of parole. After the trial, prison sentence, Strohmeyer was initially incarcerated at Ely State Prison. Ely is a maximum security prison in northern Nevada, where most inmates sentenced to life without parole in Nevada are incarcerated for at least the first portion of their sentences. He was placed in administrative segregation. This means he is housed in his own cell, in a privately secured section, and not among the general inmate population. The prison number was 059389. Strohmeyer was reportedly transported to the Lovelock Correctional Facility in Lovelock, Nevada, where he is being held in medium custody. Objections are made. Jeremy Strohmeyer later appealed his conviction. It was defended unsuccessfully by Camila Bate in 2000. Strohmeyer withdrew his confession and accused Abramson of lying to him and bullying him into pleading guilty to cover up his misunderstandings about the Nevada Code. Strohmeyer's new attorneys also argued that he wanted Abramson to plead guilty because Strohmeyer's parents could not afford to pay him additional money if the case went to trial. Abramson has denied all allegations. Ultimately, his objection was rejected. In 2001, the Nevada Supreme Court rejected Strohmeyer's appeal to vacate the guilty plea. In January 2006, Strohmeyer lost his bid for the federal court to review his case. Adoptive parents file a lawsuit. In October 1999, Strohmeyer's adoptive parents filed a $1 million lawsuit against Los Angeles County and adoption workers. They alleged that social workers deliberately withheld important information that would have prevented them from adopting him as a baby. Specifically, they claimed they were never told that Strohmeyer's biological mother had serious mental problems, including that she suffered from chronic schizophrenia and had been hospitalized more than 60 times before Strohmeyer's birth. But the Strohmeyers said they will continue to support their adopted son even though it is almost certain he will spend the rest of his life in prison. We also demand that David Cash be punished. Sharice Iverson's mother requested that David Cash Jr. be charged as an accomplice, but authorities stated there was insufficient evidence linking him to the actual crime, and Cash was never tried for any crime related to the murder. In the weeks following Strohmeyer's arrest, Cash told the Los Angeles Times that he was not dwelling on the murder of Sharice Iverson. I won't worry about someone else's life. I just worry about myself first. I won't lose sleep over someone else's problems. He also told the newspaper that making the case public made it easier for him to score goals with women. Cash also told the Long Beach Press Telegram, I'm not stupid. I'm going to make my money on this. Cash will face being labeled a bad Samaritan and the target of a campaign by students trying to have him expelled from UC Berkeley for failing to stop crime. Two local Los Angeles radio hosts later organized a rally to expel Cash from the University of California at Berkeley, but university officials stated that they had no basis to expel him because he had not been convicted of any crime. Cash expressed vague remorse for Iverson's death in a radio interview, saying, I feel very sorry for the Iverson family. It was such a tragic event. The simple fact is, I didn't know this little girl. She's from Panama. Was. Or I don't know the people who are killed every day in Africa so I can't feel remorse for them. The only person I know is Jeremy Strohmeyer, he said, but still insisted he had done nothing wrong. The developments following the Sharice Iverson incident are as follows. The murder of Sharice Iverson led to the passage of Nevada State Assembly Bill 267, 
which requires people to report to authorities when they have reasonable suspicion that a child under the age of 18 has been subjected to sexual abuse or violence. What gave impetus to the bill was the inaction of the witness and friend of the murderer, who stood next to him during the commission of the crime and did nothing. The Sharice Iverson bill, introduced by Nevada State House Majority Leader Richard Perkins, calls for fines and possible jail time for people who fail to report a crime, which led to the bill being created. The bill became law in 2000. Increasing security at Nevada casinos. As a result of this murder, Hotels in Nevada increased security in their gaming rooms. Even small arcades usually had a security guard assigned. The last words of Jeremy Strohmeyer's letter to the public in 2008 were as follows. The pain of my punishment is great, but it is a punishment appropriate to the evil I have done. Many people believe that living in prison, where there is no possibility of parole, is a completely hopeless and futile life. This is not the case. Spending the rest of one's life in prison is much more severe than being executed. I don't plan on withering away in a prison cell. I have always wanted to contribute to the world and that is my plan as long as I am allowed to do so. I need to understand more than I know what's going on here. I can't let Sharice's death be in vain. I can't let the love and support my parents gave me, and the sadness and fear they experience on my behalf, go to waste. I know that no matter what I learn, no matter how hard I try to do something meaningful with my life, it can never make up for the death of another human being. But if lives can be saved through my efforts, we have at least made a start. I owe more than I can give to my mother, father, and sister for the financial and moral support they gave me during this process. If it weren't for them, I would have given up my life to escape from the hands of the state. One day I will be someone you will be proud of. I love you.